Exercise 14. In this exercise, we take a look at ProEase functionality standalone and how it could actually deal with creating a mold. In this case, we're going to go ahead and generate a mold of a bottle that we created in Exercise 13. As you can see, this is basically a what they call blow mold. And we'll add some details to it as well and see how this is all done. So let's begin. We start off with the bottle. In this case, we have this um, E13. Let me just go ahead and save that. And I'm going to go ahead and go to New, Assembly, and go ahead and call this assembly E14. I'm going to call it E14B. Let me shrink down my screen to let it fit the view window that I'm recording in. And we can move on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and over here to the right we have Assemble and I could select the E13 part. If you want, you could actually hit the Preview option just to make sure you get a little bit of a preview ahead of time. And we'll drop that in and we'll select the default location to drop that in. The next step is we want to go ahead and build the mold around it. So over here we go to create and make sure you select part solid and we'll call this the E14 underscore cav for cavity. And we'll keep the creation method as empty and hit OK. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and turn the planes on and now we could go ahead and edit the cavity part and draw our geometry. I want to go ahead, if you take a look, when we inserted it, there are no planes associated with it. Let's go ahead and right click on that and activate the E14 cav. And from here we could go to the plane tool and select datum. So we will select the front plane here of the assembly and utilize that. Actually, I guess I didn't really need that one, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and select the assembly top and utilize that one as well. We'll take the right and recreate that. And that should give us everything we really need. Oh, I'm sorry. And one last one, the front. The assembly front. Okay. Now you'll see all the planes listed on the left here. If you, do, if you do not see these, go to the settings and tree filter. And over here select features under display and hit OK. And then they should show up in the feature tree. You might have to hit the little plus symbol that's to the left of the feature. But from there you can see it. OK. And from here I'm going to go ahead and select, in my case, my datum 2, which intersects the part right through the center. This will work as a perfect parting line for my mold. So I could go ahead and start a sketch on it and proceed to sketch. First of all, I have to select some references. I'll select my datum 3 at the bottom and this uh, assembly front. Hit close. And I'll just draw a box for the material that's going to surround this for the mold. I'll middle click and type in the values of 7 inches for the height. 5 inches for the width, and then the offset from the base will be 0.75, and then the offset from the center should be 2 inches. If it makes it any easier, you might want to actually turn off the plane display. And now here we could see the geometry and dimensions as they should be laid out. and we'll extrude it from here. So we have to hit the Done tool, the little check mark over here on the right, and now we could go to Extrude. Now for the extrusion we want to go ahead and flip this, so there's a little arrow there you could hit Flip, or there's the Flip button right over here. Make it 1.5 inches thick, and hit the Done tool. Okay, 
and that's our E14 cam. We're going to go ahead and um, cut that out in just a moment, but we also, uh, something that happens with blow molds is at the top where the material drops down into them, they have a tendency to get very hot, the molds do. And so uh, for heat dissipation purposes, sometimes uh, companies will insert a beryllium insert, and we're going to go ahead and see how we do that. So I'm going to go ahead and right click up the top where it says E14 here and activate that. And now I could go back to create and I'm going to call this the uh, E14 B insert for beryllium. And again leave it empty. And I could go ahead and if I want maybe create some planes for that as well. We we'll go over here to the datum tool. The references will use this uh, plane right here, and then we'll grab a right side plane and then a base. I've been clicking on this datum tool. It pops out of the screen. I apologize for that. I should have brought it back in so you could see what I was doing. All right. Now I could go ahead and I'm going to sketch on the, um, the datum one here. Oh, and unfortunately I just realized I've been creating these datums outside of my part file. They need to be inside of my part file. So technically I could go in and delete these just by right clicking and there's a delete option for them. So they do no good, they're just redundant. And what I need to do is edit the insert. So I'm going to right click on it and activate it. Now I could go back to the plane tool and select my datums. Okay, and if we look on the left here, now the datums are incorporated into the insert that we're creating. I'm going to go ahead and turn off all those again. And I'm just going to go ahead, um, it was datum 1 that was parallel to that surface, so I'm going to go ahead and start a sketch on that. And I want to draw an insert, so I'm going to hit sketch here, and I'll just select the edges of the model. And actually, I could have actually put more references on here. And let's do that. Under Sketch, select References and select the top edge. And maybe this edge too. Now this will give us the ability to go in and draw in a rectangle about that big. Unfortunately, we're not seeing a very good preview here until we hit the middle button. And then we could actually... Uh, maybe see a little bit more, but basically this needs to be able to extend enough to where it envelops just the very top of the bottle and around the thread because that's where the heat gathers and causes problems with when you're generating the mold or the actual uh, castings. I'm going to hit done and that looks like it's pretty good. I could just go ahead and extrude that. I'm going to flip it and we'll make that one inch and actually it defaulted to that, which is good. Beryllium is uh, a bit more expensive sometimes and it's difficult to mach it's uh, dangerous to actually machine, so we're not going to make a very big piece of it. All right, and now we'll go ahead and right click at the top of the feature tree and activate the E14 assembly. And now we could go ahead and start subtracting geometry. The way to do this, as long as you're right click and uh, are editing or activated the assembly you can now go to edit and at the bottom you'll find component operations the component operations brings open a menu manager on the right and you have the ability to merge group cut out reorder insert mode copy we want cut out and then we get to select the component so here it says select parts to perform cutout process too we actually want the cutout process of the uh, actual cavity here. So we could go ahead and select that 
and a middle click. Then we get to select the reference for the cutout. In this case, we'll get the beryllium insert taken care of first. So let's go ahead and select that. Uh, if we have a hard time selecting it, uh, in this case, it reset it. So let's try that one more time. So, so cut out and select this part and the middle click to apply it. And then from the feature tree, you can select the E14B insert. And the middle click again and middle click one more time. And now that's cut out. Now what we want to do next is actually remove the material of this red part, which is the bottle from both of those. So we go to Edit, again, Component Operations at the bottom, and then we're going to go to Cut Out, and this time we'll cut out from the beryllium insert first. So that will be our, our part for the uh, so perform the cutout process too. And then click with the middle mouse button to apply it and then select the bottle and then middle click once again and then you can hit middle click again and it will prompt you for references go ahead and apply that and you can hit uh, middle mouse button one more time now just for the sake of taking a look at what we have here um, we could go ahead and look at we hide the actual E13 part by right clicking on it we'll find hide you can see we've already removed the material from the beryllium insert let's bring it back by right clicking and unhide now we need to cut this part out from here so we go to edit oh and be careful here make sure that we are right click that up at the top here this is active for the assembly go to edit and again go to component operations and from the menu manager select cutout and we want it out of the main part which is the uh, cavity the middle click and then select the red bottle and the middle click again now for some reason it tells you that the accuracy level is set too low uh, that sometimes occurs and if that does occur there's an option under the um, file or actually under edit we can take a look at but before we do anything else let's just middle mouse click once again two times and we'll go ahead and hide the E13 part or better yet let's activate the assembly by right clicking hit regenerate and now we could go ahead and explode this so we could go to insert I'm sorry, go to View, Explode, and Edit Position. Go ahead and select an edge of the mold here, a vertical edge for a vector, and then the component that you want to split away. You could do the same. Could click on this part here, the beryllium insert, move that up. Okay, so there we could see our different components there. Now, what uh, I was talking about earlier, if you have to transform, take the bottle and actually work on it to where it, uh, the tolerance is set up, I'm going to go ahead and open it up by itself, just by right-clicking on it, selecting Open. And under Edit, uh, actually under File, under Edit there's an option And unfortunately, I will have to look for this later. Okay, actually, I managed to find it. It's under Edit and Setup. And under Setup, while you're in the part file that's in question, you could go ahead and under here you'll find lots of different options for it. And one of them is Accuracy. And here you could set the accuracy to a much higher level. So in this case, it's already set pretty high at 0.0002. You could even set to 0 0.000 up to eight decimal places. Uh, so you can make it very accurate. The higher the accuracy, the better results you'll have when it performs the cavity function, or which is basically a Boolean operation. And basically, that is it with this exercise.